Yes, my sir. Name, my name is Tim Daniel, and welcome, 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 welcome. I think I said it eight times, right? <laughs> I think so. To match I the eight game so. win streak of the Cincinnati Reds, and thank you for taking time out of your beautiful Father's Day to hang out with Ben and I on this week's edition of Late Night Reds, brought to you by River by the Riverfront and Riverfront Cincy. If you uh, got extra two or three bucks in your budget every month, head over to patreon.com slash Riverfront Cincy and hang out with us on the daily over there. So I'm pretty stoked about this. Ben, yeah, buddy. last time we brought you on the show, Matt McLean, news broke. <laughs> So, um, <laughs> well, <that was> awesome. <laughs> we know Joey Votto's coming back tomorrow, so I'm, I'm hoping that's now that you're back. Sydney's going to pop in and tell us that Christian and Carnacion Strand is getting on the bus with them. Let's go. Uh, so that's Let's that's go. what I'm hoping for. Um, so this show is going to be a lot of fun, obviously, because man, we got a lot of highlights to talk about this week. Just you know, a great, 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 great road trip. My goodness, mm-hmm. a great road trip. Um, you know, you couldn't have asked for more. You yeah. know starting in that St. Louis series, taking two of those, and then, you know, sweeping the Royals and sweeping the defending world champs. Hashtag fire Dusty is back on socials. Um, Gosh. (laughs) (laughs) I saw Mo put it out, and I was like, I laughed so hard because I was like, I remember those days. Oh, my gosh. I do remember those days. Oh, man. Yeah. I remember those days. Oh, man. Yes, Scott, indeed. What a week. Absolutely. My guy, Joey Gaditza. Um, we're also be sharing some really cool, you guys all sent me, uh, some awesome father's days, it's like father's moments of like father figures, things like that to honor father's day. Uh, so I'm going to tell you some funny stories of my dad not going to ball games. Ben, you're welcome to join in on this if you want as well throughout the show. Yeah, um, but let's go ahead and start with our usual segment one, the whoa, 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 weekend review. Yes, sir. I noticed there was eight W's there. I counted it. As there is. W on there. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, obviously you sleep the Royals and Wednesday was so awesome, man. Uh, Matt McClain hits the bond, Spencer Steer, Stuart Fairchild, Jonathan Indy, all Homer. Yeah, that was, that was really freaking fun. Uh, Tuesday where, you know, you're, you kind of rely on the bullpen to pitch a lot of innings. You come back to win. Um, this was really, really good. And then uh, Ricky Karcher on Monday, Ooh, literally man. wild <laughs> what a, it. What a wild dude! I'm thinking back to that game. What a wild ending, dude! Like watch yeah. this guy. What was crazy? That was crazy. Oh my god, so funny, so funny. But um, you know, you expect him to go take care of business in Kansas City. Yeah, I'm like, you know, two out of three. That's great. And they sweep them, and you're like, oh, yep. perfect. Um. I, I yes, Michael Sparks. I also like it when the Reds go and they are going, Absolutely. baby. They are going. They are going. I love I, lo- I love the vibes. Um, we were just talking about that before we were started recording, man. When the Reds are good, baseball is enjoyable. Like, I like get so much fun. It's so much fun to watch Reds baseball when they're good. I need to find a way to have like the pop up from Ricky Carter's post game when Jim Day just like looks at the camera and just goes like, <laughs> he did. <laughs> <laughs> We're live, buddy. Even... We're live. <laughs> and he's like, holy shit. He did. <laughs> <laughs> I hope Chad doesn't get mad at me for saying that, but uh, it's either here or there. Dude, it's Friday funny. was bro, Friday. Andrew Abbott. Yeah. Real deal, Holyfield. I Absolutely. Mean, another incredible outing. This dude just like does not believe in earned runs. He's like, "What? You guys give up runs? I don't. Yeah. I don't know what that means." Yeah, um, which you know, it, it's cool. Like, cause you know, you go out and and his his first outing, you're like, oh, "Okay, you know, he's he had a good game." But now it's starting to become consistent. You're like, "Ooh, this this guy's a dog. Like he he's out here yeah. like dealing. Like 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 yeah. Like it. Now that part was fun for me because it's like it, it's seeing him." have that mentality and it's almost like all the guys are starting to pick up on that mentality uh of you know we don't we believe in this like this is this is where we're at and, and it's you know and abbott abbott definitely goes on the mound not expecting to lose yeah yeah he does because i mean uh who was it someone at MLB network was like i feel like the reds have a young tom glavin and it was like 
Ooh. I love that comparison. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then, uh, you know, so it's a really uh, Tyler Stevenson hits that home run. Um, you know, they scored, they scored an add on run and Alexis Diaz, you could tell was just gassed. Yep. Yeah. But got yep. through, it, got through it. And, uh, you know, he did give up a run in that inning, but you know, got to chill on Saturday. Um, I want to talk about Saturday for a little bit because, you know, there were certainly times where we talk, obviously talk about the maturation of Hunter green and just like mm-hmm. see get more and more comfortable pitching. So Saturday, and we're going to get to Will Benson because this game was unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So Saturday, um, you know, Hunter doesn't necessarily have his best stuff. And there were quite a few innings there where like in the past, you would see this game get away from him and he'd be yeah. pulled third or fourth inning. But, you know, and I, there's definitely something to this having Kirk and Sally catch him. You know, I definitely believe that there's something to the camaraderie those two are building as a combo. But, uh-huh. um, Man, so like you know, he has a couple walks there, and I think the third, and um, gives up the sacrifice fly. It's a pretty deep sack fly, and you're like, oh man, this is like, oh okay, you know, he's been on a good run. He was due to have a mess, like a, a game where he was kind of not himself. He wasn't striking anybody out. Yeah, the dude just battled, just battled mm-hmm. six innings. Uh, yeah, only, you know, and he's a guy who like relies on strikeouts. Like he's a guy who's like, I got to strike people out to beat people. And mm-hmm. Cowboy made this really great comment on uh, talking with Tommy during the game yesterday that just really kind of stuck with me. Because Tommy's like, don't you find it concerning? He doesn't have any strikeouts. And Cowboy's like, at this point, he's getting outs. He's like, mm-hmm. like but believe me, when Hunter Green needs his needs his strikeouts, he's going to get his strikeouts. Mm-hmm. So you're starting to see a lot more of like, okay, my defense has played really well the past few weeks, except for the outfield. Well, that's a different story. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But uh, he's like, little, no. little shaky, little shaky. Yeah. I keep the ball in. I keep the ball in the stadium. I give, I give the offense a chance. And I thought, you know, he only had three strikeouts. He had a couple walks, but he yeah. was, you know, to not have your best stuff and still find a way to beat that team yeah. is very impressive. Yep. Yeah, and I and I think you brought up a good point. It's the maturity, right? So, like, you go through and you've watched the progression of Hunter Green. You've watched him pitch and you've watched him struggle and you've watched that, like, that, that kind of struggle make him implode. Mm-hmm. And, and we've seen that. And, and, of course, you know, the naysayers, you know, last year were like, oh, well, he doesn't have it. Oh, he's got his fastballs, blah, 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 and this, that, and the other. And I remember having this conversation with you and other Reds people like, dude, this guy is just scratching the surface of learning how to pitch. He's just scratching the surface. So now you're starting to see that. So you go into a game against the defending world champions. You don't have your best stuff. You you battle. You battle through six innings. You only strike out three. You give up two walks. But you battle to get out. And, and, and Cowboy makes a great point. When you watch professional pitchers, when you watch guys who've got electric stuff in the major leagues and you watch them struggle, it's seeing how they go around that struggle to let you know how they're maturing. So Hunter Green a year ago, that becomes a six-run, seven-run outing for him. He gets the four innings, and it's and then they got to pull him because he's thrown 90-something pitches. Yeah. This time, this time around this year, he battles through six innings. I think he might have been over a little bit over 100 pitches. He has three strikeouts, two balls, or two walks, and he only gives up three runs against the world champions. Like, this isn't a slouch team. Like, this is a yeah, very this good isn't the Royals. Baseball. Yeah, this isn't the Royals. This is a very good baseball team. And he, to not have your best stuff and to battle like that uh, through six innings um, shows that he is starting to mature as a pitcher for sure. Yeah, you, you, I absolutely love it. Um, Will Benson. So, you know, since the call up, we've talked about on the show, you talk every, every Reds, you know, shows talking about it. Um, and, you know, just this, like, since he came back to the big leagues from when he got sent down after, you know, having that one for 25 start, mm-hmm. just like spitting at balls that he knows that just aren't necessary to swing at. And, um, you know, extending pitch extending at bats man it's not like you know if he's down oh two he's still alive now 
And you're yep. starting to see more of that. Just seeing this, like, you know, we talked about the maturation, obviously, and that's a word we're going to use a lot about mm-hmm. this team because they are so young. And I understand we're probably going to get people sick of that term at some yeah. point this year. But what you're seeing from him right now with just kind of extending at bats and drawing walks, you know, stealing bases, it's been so awesome, man. And uh, I know today, like, you know, he almost like got injured diving yeah. you know going going into going into going the, into the stands trying to get there <laughs> yeah which like hey yeah i love the hustle absolutely, absolutely love the hustle absolutely. but live the, live the fight another game and maybe get yeah. a hat that can actually fit your head i feel like right <laughs> all the time but here's the thing i loved about that play and people and people don't people that see it like they don't understand how important that play like like he saw that his pitcher was struggling like he was struggling to get out. So with, I think they were either first and third, or they, they had just tied it up. Or I mean, yeah. So he went after that ball, knowing that man, we need an out, which I love. I love now. Now I don't want him to get injured doing it, but I definitely understand where he was coming from. Like man, this guy needs an out. I'm gonna go battle for my guy and go try to get this ball to get him an out. So yeah, yeah. It it, it was good to see. Yeah, I I really I really love him, man. He's yeah. just like I don't know if he's like I don't think he's a star by any means, but no, no, no. I think I think he is that guy that like you really want to have on your team. Yeah. That like, you know, you can probably keep around for four, five, six years. You know, when your team's really good, maybe be a fourth outfielder. Yep. Um And he reminds me of he reminds me of back in the eighties, early nineties, Cal Daniels, a guy I've heard that. that comp. He he is a guy that you can plug in. He he can play a decent outfield. He can hit around 270, 280. He's gonna hit you just a couple bombs. He's gonna do the little thing. Like like he reminds me of that guy. He like Eric Davis was the star. Cal Daniels was the guy that like was the plug and play guy. So like it, it he reminds me of Cal Daniels a lot. Cal Daniels makes a lot of sense. I like a Jason Hayward, and I'm like yeah. Why can't Will Benson be Jason Hayward? And I think yep. Chad Chad mentioned that on an episode not too long ago as well. That's um, a good comparison. Absolutely. Yeah. Jason he's still Hayward. in the league, by the way. I had no I had no idea he was still playing. Like he's still still contributing in the baseball in the MLB. Weirdest one of the weirdest careers of all time. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> rookie rookie year, he's an all-star. Yep. Has not made the all-star game since. He's going into nope. his he's in his 14th season in the big leagues. Yep. Yeah. And so like you don't see that. Oh. It's a weird trajectory. Like it's like it's yeah, it's it's yeah. weird. Um, but yeah, this you know, and like Hunter, like you know, we talk go back to Hunter for a second. He leaves that game. It's six two, and you're like, oh mm-hmm. great, he got some run support. Jabot comes in and gives up a homer. I can act. Everyone acts surprised. Um, and then the offense kind of punches on. And like you know, if you stack up ten runs on the Astros, like that's mm-hmm. pretty awesome. But today, um. Obviously, you know, India homered yesterday and homered today. We're going to talk about kind of focus on India's power numbers this week here in a second uh, later in the show. But I feel like today was like one of those like it was another cowboy thing. So I'm in the car driving back from something today and I got the game on the radio uh, when Spear ties the game up. Pat Magooch has showed up, everybody. Everybody say hi to Pat Magooch. How are you, my friend? Mm-hmm. It's good to see you. What up, Pat? <laughs> <laughs> Good brother Pat in the building. Um, so, <laughs> so Steer hits the homer to tie the game up. Uh, mind you, this is after Ellie freaking <laughs> beats a ball to first base. That's a grounder to um, to Jose Abreu, and we all of a sudden get like Steer hits this homer, and Cowboy says this thing about like it's awesome. It's another awesome thing. Cowboys has been on it this year. Been on it, by the way. He's yeah. Great. Um, he goes, I have played on teams that like had a great road trip and it's your getaway day and you sh- you like fall down in the lead and you go, all right, like it's just not our day. We'll, we'll get back at it tomorrow. Um, he's like, I've been on teams that, you know, just like don't show up at mm-hmm. all. I'm just like, I'm just ready to get on the plane and go home. He's like, I, have not seen a team like this and he's like and it's he's like i've never seen anything like this team he's like you can never ever ever count them out um so yeah. yes that's what like sear hits that bomb uh but 
I think the thing I want to kind of focus on here is, um, you know, I know Ellie did not have his best week at the plate, mm -hmm. but his ability to just create runs mm -hmm. and just in different ways is so fascinating, right? Because like we know everything we've read about him, everything we've seen about him, we know like this dude is as talented as talented gets. Um, he's unbelievable. He's so talented. And it's like, you know, he's the guy we've been waiting on and he's lived up to the hype. They're nine and two since Ellie De La Cruz is getting called to the big leagues. Yep. Um, you know, unbelievable, but just this like ability to create runs. So today in this game alone, the play we just talked about, he hits a sharp ground brawl to Jose Abreu and slides in the first, so fast yep. slides in the first base. Sear hits a homer, ties the game up. Mm -hmm. Um, and then in the 10th, you know, if he doesn't like attempt to steal on that Fraley ground ball, that's a that's double a, play. Absolutely. So, you know, there's that. And of course he has the go ahead run on the single, which was like, didn't you just kind of feel like when he came to bat there, like he was going to do something. It just kind of felt like yeah. it was like the way the, the way the team's been playing, he was due for a big moment. You just felt like you're like, Ellie's getting it. Ellie's get take it, you know, got to do something big here. Yeah, you you absolutely felt it, and I, I like the fact that, he, like, this guy plays hard. Yeah, like, he could he could come up here and just coast on his ability, but he doesn't. Like, no, I mean, when was the last time you seen a guy beat out a chopper to first and slide into first base just so he could be on base? Like, superstars usually don't do that. Guys yeah. that have been like guys that have been touted as the next great thing usually don't give up their body like that on a chopper to first usually they they hit the chopper they know it's the chopper so then they just kind of jog it out now granted lebray you made a great play he you did know? i mean he made a great stop but usually most guys see that they're like oh he made a stop he's gonna beat me to the bag it's an out like ellie busted it out of the out of there and beat that guy on a chopper to first to be a run be a runner on base and then gets knocked in so like it's the it's the magnitude at which he plays, which has been so surprising. Like I can take I can take the ups and the downs of his at bats because he's young. I mean I can take all that, but dude, like you can't teach that kind of heart and aggression and, and just wanting to be on the base to win for your team. Like that stuff right there, that's an attitude, and it shifts the attitude of your franchise. Like like it's it's a it's a great it's great to see. That a guy that young going to get to the chopper. <laughs> I saw that. But to see that guy that young have that kind of like attitude and want to to get on base, and that's that's cool to see. No matter how no matter how good or bad he's hitting. Yeah, and I think like if you've looked at history for him, this is kind of this these slumps have happened everywhere when he first gets to a new level. He yeah. struggled to double A when first got there, his first like 40, 50 plate appearances. He struggled to triple A his first 40, 50 plate appearances. We all heard about that this year. Yeah. Um, and like, you know, Pat mentioned, he's still cranking the ball. Like he's still hitting it very hard. Yeah. And, you know, obviously we know he's drawing walks and he's stealing bases and he's just like, man, it's so fun. He's um, electric, dude. He's electric. I, th I think you can say the same thing too for um McLean's the same way, you know, obviously yeah. it's just, we know the special young talent is the theme of this team and we're going to talk about it, you know, hopefully for the next 15 years. Yeah. Uh, you know, if everything goes correctly, uh, but you know, those two just kind of like, it felt like they just changed the, the attitude. It was like, you know, they were like, Hey, we're not just happy to be here. Like we're here to win. We're here to win. Yep. And it's, it's yeah, so fun yeah. to watch. Yeah, I, and I th I think that that's – I think that was wise on management's part. Like, I, like they could have really sat on their hands and left those guys down there and just let them be triple A and then try to – but I think that the – I think management understood, like, if we, if we bring guys up that want to win and are playing that hard, it just makes everybody else – and you look at it from Will Benson to De La Cruz to McLean – to Abbott, to all the guys that they've brought up, man. Like, all those guys have won at every level. So now it's starting to become – now it's starting to become a th where winning is starting to become the norm. And, and these guys are competing and they're doing – Charlie Hustle, uh-uh. Um, <laughs> um, so, yeah, so I, I think their attitude has started to breed 
that that winning kind of lifestyle, which is really cool to see. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, what a week, man. And they're a half game out of first place, you know, mm-hmm. like crazy. Thanks for nothing, pirates. <laughs> you shithole town <laughs> and your terrible cup of, baseball cup, team. Cup of coffee. You had a cup of coffee up there. Now you can head on back down to where you're normally at. Yeah. Henry Davis got called up. Pretty excited to see how he plays for them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Louisville guy. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, just plays for the bane of my existence of baseball teams. <laughs> um, <sighs> oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. Michael Sparks is on it. <laughs> on it. Yes. Absolutely, Michael Sparks. Robert, every week I say that. Every week, I'm all about the Cuban Missile. Coming oh, back to man. So it's big enough here, traction. I was going to say, Tim, so here, here's my thing. So you, you, we have Diaz, who's been – I mean, he's going he, to – he should be an all-star. Let's let's put it like, like that guy should be an all-star. Yeah. Um, if you make a move to bring in Chapman, it is, is Chapman your setup guy? Yep. Or absolutely, and then you leave Diaz as your closer. Absolutely, dude. That that I mean, if you can bring Chapman in the eighth and Diaz in in the ninth, like my gosh, my yep. gosh. I I thought it was funny though when he was asked about this. Mm-hmm. His comment was not like, "Oh, you know, we'll see." Like, you know, it'd be. It was like when they were like, "Do you have interest in playing for the Reds again?" He was like, "Yeah, I would love to play for my first team again." Yeah, um, I thought that was cool. Um, well, I, I think there's something. I think there's something about uh, one or something about this Reds team that is attractive to a lot of people. Yes. Um, and yes. two, I think that I don't think he's ever felt the way he's felt was when he played for the Reds. Like we adored that dude. We yeah. loved a role as Chapman. Now he went to New York, did some, you know, had success in Kansas City. Now, had, but like, like. The Cincinnati Reds as a franchise and as a city, we love the Rollers chat. Like absolutely, like, and I don't think he's had that since. And and for him to want to come back here and pitch, like I would, I would not be, I would not be shocked if that happened, because I I think he wants to make that move. Now, granted, Kansas City is awful, um, but also too, I think he wants to make that move as far as a career move for sure. Do you think? Um... Do you think Colin Calgill will give up 54 the first base coach? You think he'll give it back to him? Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I I, I don't think that yeah. I mean as a as a first base coach you can be any number. Yeah. <laughs> like you know what I mean? And I'm sure yeah. and I'm sure I'm I'm sure a Roldy I'm sure a Roldy Chapman's got a couple hundred a couple hundred K he could put push to that guy or, or, you know, some signed memorabilia or whatever that guy would want, you know, he, <laughs> he would, he would take care of him. You know what I mean? He'd take care of him. He'd be all right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, So like I said, it is father's day, obviously. So I'm going to bounce around a little bit with some segments today. Um, I asked you guys this week for anyone who was willing to participate, to send me some of your favorite stories of like baseball with your dad, stepdad, father figure, whoever. And I got some, some awesome, awesome, awesome stories. And I'm going to share a few of them. Through. I'm going to, I don't feel like I'm doing this right. As someone who really honors his dad's, his relationship with his dad and baseball uh, mm-hmm. to not share all of these. Uh, so just make it a little lengthy, but I'm going to share a couple. We'll do another segment, share a couple, do another segment. Um, and so I wanted to start with this really cool story from a good friend, Jace Lenford, uh, part of the riverfront Patreon group. So he sent me this to say, my dad passed away in 99 from cancer when I was 13. As a kid, we had vacations to Cincy, and that was about all we could afford. We'd go to games at Riverfront Synergy Field. One game, we were in the right field stance. Reggie Sanders says, should be a Reds Hall of Famer. Absolutely. Uh, hits, a, thousand percent. hits a tank. Next inning, he comes out for defense, and my dad in his sonic booming voice yells, nice hit, Reggie. Reggie turns around and throws him his warm-up ball directly to my dad, who caught it and handed it to me. That's oh wow, that's awesome. That's what it's all about, man. Yeah, that's what it's all about. Um, we find good brother John Alski, also a really good friend. Uh, my son was born in early 2021. My dad, my son, and myself have made sure the three of us see a game in Cincinnati every year. And he sent oh. me three pictures from all three trips that they've had so far. 
So oh, that's cool, man. Yeah, really cool. We got some yeah. really, really, really cool stories I'm going to share throughout the show. Uh, I'm really excited. Um, but then, yes, sir. The king got in the t- got in the school bus. Yes, he did from Louisville, and uh, he's bringing it back to Cincinnati. First things first. Did you absolutely love that video? That I did, posted? dude. It was oh, awesome. <laughs> I just so love that funny. side of Joey Votto. Like that, that's just that's just dope to see him do stuff like that. Yeah, it was so funny. Um, and then today he posts that he's on his way back to Cincinnati. Sounds like he's gonna be on the be uh planning to be in the line tomorrow. Um, yeah. so Joey Votto wraps up his rehab assignment at Louisville. I will say, first things first, shout out to the bats. Uh, I got to cover my first game there on Thursday, and they were great to me, absolutely yeah. great. You know, I'm just a podcaster. They could have just been like, whatever, kid, like, go do whatever you want. But they were awesome. Gave me everything I needed. Best catering I've ever had working a media moment. And um, Fountain Soda in the press box is a game changer. For those who know, you know, we work a lot of basketball. We're very fortunate to work basketball. We never get Fountain Soda in press boxes. So we don't. um, And I say in here, people saying dumb things and. What I mean by saying dumb things is not necessarily if your question is like, how does he fit into the lineup every day? Like that's a rational question. That's a mm-hmm. decision process from the, from people that like, you're going to have to have this question and have this conversation. Uh, Mr. Juan, it sounds like he could be back tomorrow um, is what they're kind of saying. So to answer the question, Robert, mm-hmm. I, I, I hope that's not the case, but what Robert's saying is he's saying, I hope Reds fans don't turn on Vada if they were to start losing. And I think that's the conversation that we're having here mm-hmm. is I don't think Joey Votto is one who would like, people are like, well, is he going to mess with the good vibes of these young dudes? Like, and Mo talked about this the other day on his show and it just really struck a nerve with me because it's so accurate. At what point in all these years that we've had Joey Votto, has he ever messed with team chemistry? At what point? Has he ever stepped in and been like, nope, I'm going to make sure I get mine. Um, You know, and it's like, I think where that's the point where it's kind of silly to me. Like, no, if you're like, hey, look, he's 39. He just had his arm repaired in Mm -hmm. the last 10 months. Like, I'm a little concerned. That's rational. That's a conversation that we can have. And we could be like, we can talk about like how we think he could be beneficial. What we're worried about. Absolutely. That's part of the part of analyzing this. Saying that, like, he's basically going to ruin the mojo and the juju of this team. Like, <laughs> he just posted a video on his Instagram, like, yeah. literally talking about driving a school bus back to Cincinnati. And you're like, that guy's going to mess with how fun this team is. Right. <laughs> What's here, yeah. Here? Yeah. I, here, here are my two things with Joey Votto. And, 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 and both of them are, are they're not negative. Um, my biggest, I guess my not really concern. Um, my thing was, was that, and you, I think we had a conversation. It's just ABs at bats. Um, because, and I, and I know we have a ton of, we just have a ton of young guys that are, are able to, you know, contribute and do things like that. So, um, I don't, I'm not worried about the at bats cause I know that Vado is still Joey Vado. Um, I just, you know, I just hope that they still continue to develop the young guys around Votto. Now, here's my one. Here's my one thing that I'm really excited about is that, and you can people whoever want to argue with me, you can fight me, whatever it is. Joey Votto is the best hitter in the modern era. You mark it down. That guy. Oh, he uh, mark it down. To have that guy in your dugout with. Ellie De La Cruz, Will Benson, McClain, all these guys that can draw knowledge from Joey Votto. You're telling me that having this guy in your dugout, watching your at-bats live, showing you techniques and things of the trade that he's picked up in all these years is a bad thing? You're crazy. You're crazy. Like, to me, the benefits of having Joey Votto around it is is astronomical in that sense. What better way to take a young team that's that's battling, that's learning on the fly, that's doing all these things? You bring a guy in like Joey Votto, who's a should be a two time MVP, but was only one time. Um, has all these all stars, all these things. He's got you know 
you know, however many hits, how many, like, like the guy it has done everything in this league that you want to do. How could that be negative? Like, I, I, that, I don't, I don't see that part. Like, I don't see where people would be like, oh, I don't want him messing with the mojo. Like, come on, guys. Like, it's, it's Joey Votto. Like, right. Like, like, like you said, he's never been a guy that's been a I guy, a me guy. Uh, he's never been a guy that's came in and said, I'm going to do this. This is going to be my show. Like, I just think the way that he's going to be able to lead this young group can only be beneficial. So I will correct you just on a slight thing. The only time he's ever been the me guy was when he was heading that home run streak and he did the, oh, Ted, yeah, Lasso. Yeah. He did the Ted Lasso thing. Yeah. Ted Lasso. <laughs> yeah. Other than that, you're absolutely right. But that's still being just an excellent teammate. Um, yes. And, you know, McLean talked about it on Jim Day's podcast. I believe it was this week. It was this week or last that he was on. And talking about when he was down in Louisville with Joey and just like how awesome it was to have Joey around. And like yeah. they did this really funny video where like uh, Joey's playing chess with one of the guys on the team and McLean just comes in and just knocks the board over and leaves. And uh, he was like, I guess him and Joey were planning out ahead of time with, uh, to play a prank on the other player. Uh, so that was pretty <laughs> funny. Um, you know, Joey Gadita asked, where does he hit in the lineup? And I saw someone on Twitter today. It may have been. May have been uh, Brandon on Base Machine um, that said, like, if I were the Reds, and if, uh, don't quote me on that. It could be anyone yeah, else. Yeah, I, you know, yeah. there's so many people I follow. It's so much awesome, great Red Gosh, social media insight. Yeah. yeah. But he's like, if I'm them, I think I'd bat him behind Ellie De La Cruz because then Ellie gets more pitches to hitch. Yeah. And because Joey, you know, Sydney brings up the point, veteran leadership, he nails that. Yep. This team does, you know, they've hit some home runs lately. You know, Fraley hit one today, obviously, in his first game back. India said a couple this week. We're going to talk about India in the next segment. Um, they still need some pop. And, oh, yeah. you know, that's where he can kind of come in here because I think that's what he's going to kind of do. Um, he hit a tank the day after I was at the oh, yeah. Bats game. Yeah, he crushed yeah. it. Yeah, and he's drawn a ton of walks again. So I, Yeah, I, I, think that, I think that he... You, I think he, if he bats fifth behind Ellie, like I think he protects. I, I, I people still don't want to pitch the bottom. I don't care what, I don't care how old he is. Like people are still going to righties pitch especially. To Ellie. Yeah, and they they do not want to pitch to Joey Votto. Still, I you know what I mean. Like he still has that kind of respect and, and pop in his bat to make you pay for bad pitches. So, yeah, I I think that would be a great spot for him. Yeah, I I really I really like that. Uh, Sydney says the interesting thing is going to be who goes down. And that is, yeah, that's the million dollar question. Um, like, is it Stu Fairchild, you know, and who truly has contributed? You know, you can't say Stu Fairchild's done a bad job of what he's supposed to do for the team. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't think they're going to DFA Kevin Newman. Um, I know he's not everyone's favorite player, but he's getting big at big hits and big moments lately, and mm -hmm. you can't take that away from him. <laughs> Um, I can't imagine, you know, Will Myers is going to be up soon as well. So they're going to make this decision again yeah. soon, depending how that shakes up. So, um, yeah, I would say if I had to pick somebody and I don't like to do this because I don't want to say anyone's going to get demoted. Right, um, right. but I would say it's probably Stu Fairchild. I don't know if that's fair. Um, uh, but I think that that's probably your best fit as far as position player. Now, I'm not sure what they're at on relievers. You know, could they send down like Daniel Duarte who pitched today? Um, potential, potentially. I don't yeah. know how that's all going to work out. But yeah, tomorrow when they make that a decision, uh, it's possible. Newman has an option? What? I did not know that. Ooh. Ah, uh, man. But I can't see them doing that. I would. Yeah. I, I wouldn't hate it. Um, and again, this isn't me saying I want Kevin Newman to lose his job by any means. Um, Robert asks, when does Christian Acrosion uh come up and where does he fit into the mix? Everywhere. Uh the bats this week were like, we'll just try and see how he does in left field and right field. Because, you know, I think that's what's gonna be. Steer, mm -hmm. you know, played left field Friday. He's been PTO. He told David Bell, like, if you need to throw me in the outfield, like I'll do it for the team. Um that's interesting. Oh, Bear does bring a good point. They send out, they send Stu down. They lose their last righty outfield bat because they sent Barrero down. When oh, yeah. Came up. Um, yeah. This is going to be interesting. This um, is going to be interesting. <laughs> you know, 
the Casali Melee thing is now fascinating um too with this because like this is like let's just go say this is a good problem to have it's a very good problem i was just thinking the same thing dude this is a great problem to have (laughs) yeah um but man it's gonna be fascinating to see how it all shakes out um but i'm excited to have joey back you know come back for this colorado series and get your you know be back at home at gabp Mm -hmm. it's gonna be fun um I think Hopkins got sent down today, Pat, with Fraley. Actually, he did. With, yeah, he did. Yeah, um, Robert. If uh, CES is on the bus with Joey, then I'm all for it. Um, it sounds like India is okay today from uh, you know, the scary. double play. <sighs> so that would be yeah. That was like you know that was really that, scary. <laughs> that was. All right, let's get before we get to India. Let's share a couple more of these cool Father's Day stories. Uh, this one from Rex Scott is a little lengthy, but it's cool. It's it was I had to share it, and he sent me a lot, so I unfortunately did have to cut it off at some point. I tried to get as much in as I could, but uh, he says my dad died in 2018. And I miss him all the time. He was the biggest baseball fan I've ever known, and I have countless memories about our mutual love to the game. He gave me my first glove, which had Roberto Clemente's signature embossed on it. We were watching them together when I was a boy, and Hank Aaron hit his 715th home run, and we were on a family road trip when the news came over the radio that Thurman Munson has died in a plane crash. Mm. As a kid, I lost track of how many times he drove us from where we lived in Athens to see the Reds play at Riverfront. He took me and my brother to see Marty Joe and some of the players when they came to Athens during the offseason. So that was uh, that's a really cool one. I really dug that. That is cool. What we'll make it too? Yeah, Charlie's is fun too. So back when I was really good. Jeez. Yeah. Charlie Zoller. She sent this into me back when I was 13 and 14. I was on elite travel ball team where I ended up being one of three people on the team that did not play in college. And my dad was basically doing all the grunt work for the program to the point where he had so much stress on top of his full-time job that he passed out twice during the period. You being a sports dad, I'm sure you know that that feeling all too well. I mentioned this because when I got to high school, I was around 16 and only received interest from two, two schools and below and, and below. I told him I didn't have any interest in playing college level anymore and would rather go to a big school. I was worried it was crushing him after all the time he put in. He didn't even flinch and said that it didn't matter to him, that he loved me more than anything. And it's something I'll never forget. I'm lucky to still have him currently. That's that's that's, yeah. that's what it's all about, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It, you know, when you have kids that play sports, man, you, you, you have to be aware of, aware of what their desires are, but you also have to be aware that your desires don't become their desires. So, you know, I definitely understand that. You know, I have a son that's 16 and a couple of years ago, he gave up playing baseball, which it was tough because, you know, that was kind of our first thing. That was kind of our first love together was tossing baseball and, and doing that. But, he decided to, to play basketball, which was cool. You know, I, I love watching him play sports, but uh, it, it's the bonds that you build uh, w- with that. Like it, it, it is a really, it's something that you never ever get back. And it's something that you always cherish. Cause I find myself sitting there watching him do stuff. And, and it's funny cause we were going to church today, which is, which is odd enough. And everybody kept saying how much taller he is than me now. So it's like, Gosh, like, I know. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, all right, guys, I know he's taller than me now. I get it. I get it. All right, I get it. So yeah, but you know, it, it's cool that that people are sharing these memories because it's it's uh you never forget that stuff, man. And it's always good to see those bonds and those connections and how baseball and sports in general will just connect, you know, parents and kids, and it's it's just awesome. So it for is. people that shared, for people that shared, uh, thank you. It's really cool. Oh, we got more. Oh got yeah. More. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to share this last one before we go to our next segment. This is a good friend of the show. I think he's actually in the chat tonight. I know he popped. I saw his name pop up a couple times. If he hasn't left yet. Uh, good friend from up North, Joey Gaditza. One of my, this one was super, super close to home for me. I really love this one. Yeah. So Joey says, growing up in Canada was all Jays and at the time, the Expos. My mom was a nurse and worked a lot of shift work, and my dad played in a band and toured a lot. So I spent a lot of my time with my grandparents, who were both huge Toronto Blue Jays fans. After all my Little League games, they'd take me to Dairy Queen to get the Sunday and the mini baseball helmets. Oh, baby, do I love helmet <laughs> yeah. Sunday. Do I love helmet Sunday? Yes. 
Um, usually only had a select few to choose from. I remember always wanting the red helmet with the wishbone C. And one day it was there and my grandpa snatched it up for me. Kickstarted my Reds fandom and the rest is history. Oh, that's awesome. I'll tell you this. There's nothing like going after after a baseball game. And a matter of fact, when I was a kid, my baseball team was Dairy Queen. So, like, like it was a given that after every game, oh, we'd go get a blizzard or a ice cream and a helmet. Like, yeah, so that, that definitely rings a bell for me. Shout out Joey Gaditza for that one. Uh, plays the uh, music for the Riverfront Bengals show, by the way. Oh, cool. So I may have to commission Joey to make some uh, music for uh, here for Late Night Reds at some point for my outro. I still oh, got. Yeah. I'm the only one. I'm the only one in the network that doesn't have an outro. I figured out, and Chad hasn't yelled at me yet, so I'm yelling at myself where he can get to me. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, we'll get to that. Uh, let's talk about the captain, Mister India. El Capitan. Man, you're talking about a dude setting the tone. Talk about a team player. Talk about a guy who was like hitting lead off his whole career, and all of a sudden was like, "Okay, I'll be the third hitter." Yeah, like he's been the man. It took him a little while to get comfy in the three spot. You know, it felt like he was doing a little too much there for a bit. But man, these past two series, three homers and seven old stakes, seven ribeyes yeah. uh, in the Kansas City Houston series. Um, you know, this is the guy who, like I said all year, and we've talked about it. This is the guy who put his put the team on his back. This is the guy who dubbed them America's team, Heck which yeah, is. He did. Everyone's really mad about, which is really goofy to me. Like, it's just fun. All right, dudes, like, have some fun. And they're having right. a blast. They and, are. Um, you know, had a pretty rough throw today. <laughs> that, was, that was a yeah. defensive play that you see in Bad News Bears. Uh, <laughs> but uh, other than that, you know, to see him kind of finding some pop again has been really, really fun. Um, to see him playing well. And how fun he is. Like he, you know, he plays like his hair's on fire and he's got great lettuce. So if that's on fire, you know, we got, we got worries. Uh, but I, uh, I, I love Jonathan India. All this mm-hmm. talk a few weeks ago about like, well, you don't have a position for him. So maybe you should trade him. Oh, dude, uh, I was fired I was, up. I was I like, no, you that. don't like, trade that me? guy. No, not at all. Yeah, he's the table setter, dude. No, absolutely, you can't trade that guy. And so, uh, thank God they did not listen to that. Uh, and Jonathan India is still on the big league roster, and he's still really awesome. Yes, he is, dude. He's and and, and to his credit, man, like he is, he's a guy to me that and like like you said, he's the captain. Like that guy sets the tone. Uh, you know, the Viking hat, the cape, like he set the tone for all that stuff. America's team, like he saw all this young talent popping in. And he's like, dude, this this is where it's at. And, yeah. and he set the tone. Like even last year, he set the tone. Like like that guy wants to be here. He wants to be a red. He wants to be a leader. And he is all of those things. So shout out to Jonathan India, dude. Like, like it's hard. People don't understand how hard it is going from – batting first to batting third because it's it is super it's super difficult to change your approach at the plate and the style that you play at that you've been used to doing for the last whatever many years he's been the leadoff guy to go into third where you're you know asked to provide a little pop you're you know you're you're bad like you you had to change your whole mentality at the plate so this guy is a player and, and and he is fun to watch i mean he like you saw today in that double play dude he stood right in the line of fire and completed that throw and like it it scared me at the death I, I was like oh great great he freaking broke his ankle it's gonna suck like like you know i was really upset but you know shout out to him dude he he is he's been playing incredible and the young guys you can see the young guys have followed his energy they've brought energy and they followed his energy so it, it's been good and he's starting to, he's playing really well yeah i love jonathan india man he's uh He's been a blast and uh, you know, to see him healthy has been tremendous. Um, he does like, you know, he, he gets a little roughed up quite a bit, you yeah, know, he does. Um, but you kind of like it, you know, kind of the kind of dude you kind of want to go like you go to war for it. He's like, I'm gonna tough it out. Uh, oh, yeah. Like today he gets the post game interview with Jim day and he's like, I'm good. I'll be yeah. alive tomorrow. I guarantee it. And it's like, you like that guy. You know, oh that's yeah, the guy, absolutely. That's the guy I want on my team, and uh, I'm so happy he plays for my team. Yes. The worst thing about Johnson Indy is that he went to Florida. Other than that, 
you know, not a complaint <laughs> in the world. Yeah, not a complaint in the world. Uh, he's right. a Florida guy. <laughs> yeah, he is. Got some more uh, fun Father's Day stories here. I just did Joey's. I did Charlie's. This one's cool. Shout out Jeff Amlong, who sent this to me via Twitter. Uh, 2017, I'm about to graduate from UofL. The Reds were home against St. Louis. I drove on a Monday night, cut class on Tuesday morning, went to see the Reds win over the Dirty Birds with my dad, who hadn't been to a Reds game in five years. Not a big baseball fan. Ended up driving back to Louisville the next morning, knowing the Reds would again miss the playoffs, but I got to spend a great night with my dad watching the Reds play and beat the Dirty Birds. So, I like that awesome. one. Yeah, that's uh, really cool. I think he would do it, Mr. Juan. Mr. Juan asked, if the Reds asking you to play left field next year, do you think he'd do it happily? I think so. I think he's oh, just yeah. that kind of dude. Yeah. yeah. I think he's just that kind of dude. Sydney says, go Gators. I will ban you from my show. I'm <laughs> You're here every week. You're here every week and you tell all your friends. So I can't. <laughs> out. Um, talked about John. Seth Shaner. This one's fun. My grandpa and I have been to every non-COVID opening day since 1995. The memory that sticks in my mind is when the Reds would do something good, he would slap that on my hand if it was on the armrest or my knee so hard it would almost bring tears. He learned to <laughs> dodge such blows. That's awesome. <laughs> that is. Uh, I really love this one from Steve Malchin, uh, one of my one of the great Twitter followers I have who he is is, is a do it here. So he says, This is cool. This is like the ultimate full circle father son baseball. Oh moment. my gosh, my final game at Crosley. Wow. Yeah. So he says, My dad took me to the final game at Crosley. I don't remember as I was three and a half, but I did see the torn ticket stubs. So I got tickets to the final game at Riverfront and took my father. Always something to make me smile thinking about. Wow. That's cool. That's incredible. So that's awesome. Yeah. So today was like, you know, I've talked about this. One of the big reasons I really wanted to keep late night Reds going after the original split up was like the Reds were the team my dad and I bonded over. This was the team mm-hmm. that like we grew our relationship on really and in, in some in some forms. Um, so you know, I said in my intro video, like I'm doing the show, I dedicate the show to my dad every week. He means so much to me. He introduced me to the Reds, he's the reason I love the Reds. Um, so I didn't think it'd be right for me to not be able to tell some fun baseball stories of my dad and I, and I just want to tell this one particular because it cracks me up. <laughs> so, uh, I talked about weird subs on the show. I talked about uh-huh. with him about the walk off against the Braves in the first Sunday night baseball game at GBP and my dad like calling the homer before my dad. Also, I don't just say this because like he called every home run, but he also called Ramon Hernandez's walk off on 2011 opening day. That was freaking cool. Oh man. That was oh, one of my wow. favorite moments ever. Um, but that same season, 2011, there, you know, it's it's a very missed opportunity season. They're like mm-hmm. four games under 500. They have a chance. You know, if they just could put a couple more wins together, they're, they're in the playoffs. You know, the Cardinals might not win the damn World Series that year. Yeah. Um, so we had season tickets in 104 in the Terrace Southfield. And we're just talking like normal people do at baseball games, just about different stuff. And my dad makes mention of... Uh, well, you know that the rule is if someone does one thing with their uniform, everyone has to do it in reference to at the time Mike Leake was wearing stirrups and no one else was. Uh, he's like, you know, technically, since Mike Leake wore stirrups, either he's supposed to wear long pants or everyone else is supposed to wear stirrups. It's the technical rule. And this guy, I guess, thinks like, I'm hot shit. So I'm going to tell him he's wrong. And my dad was very competitive. So this guy turns around. He goes, nope. That's not true. My dad's like, yeah, it's, you know, it's just not an enforced rule. Like, and ha- you know, it's whatever. The guy's like, no, it's not true. They wouldn't do that. There's no way baseball would let them do that. And my dad's like, all right, man, like, whatever. What's fine? <laughs> and the guy, like, keeps going. It's not like he's, like, turns around and goes back to watch the game. So finally he's like, Tim, look it up. So I look it up. And I'm like, yeah, sure enough here. It says, like, if some person does one thing that inter- uh, interacts with their uniform, everyone else has to do it. We are in the middle of freaking left field at Great American Ballpark on a Sunday afternoon in July. You know, it's freaking scorching hot. The sun's coming down. My dad, in his ultra competitive way, hops up and he's like, I was right. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, uh, this year Juan just put a really cool one in here. He said, uh, lost my dad to COVID in 2021. He drove my five runs in middle school night to a Reds game and the Louisville Bat Museum. Spent a day, entire day of baseball. So grateful for so thankful for a great dad. Oh, I awesome. love the Louisville Bat Museum. I absolutely love it. Um, I haven't been in a while, but I talk about it all the time. Um, one of my favorite things to do. I was going to say, been? it's it's been a long time. I might have went, uh, dude. It's been yeah, it's been at least it's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. But it is really any, cool. You have any cool dad baseball stories? Um, I'll say this: my my favorite baseball stories always involve my dad, and it's not Reds games, but it was like my games. So I can always remember my dad never wanted to coach me in baseball, but. Like when the coach couldn't be there, like he'd always want to step in and be like the 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 coach or like yeah. oh, I'll I'll take the boys for the day and blah blah blah. You're like all right, so I'll never forget. So we're we're in a in a baseball game. I, I might have been like eleven or twelve or something like that, and and we're playing, and it's one of the games my dad is sub, and you know, and he's and we're playing. You know, it's it's a back and forth game. It's it's eleven it's eleven you kids. Like we you know. It, it, yeah. it is what it is. So we're playing, and my dad's the first base coach, and he's filling in, and he's you know giving all these all this stuff, and he's telling me different stuff. And the third base coach guys telling me stuff, and I'll never forget. <laughs> the third base coach tells me something, and my dad looked at me. He goes, "Don't you listen to him? You're my son. You're gonna <laughs> do." That. I was like, "I was like, all right, cool." And of course, I hit, I freaking smashed the ball. He's like, "I told you, just listen to me." And I'm like. And we had tons of moments like that just because like he would like he was very knowledgeable about different things, but it was it was like odd it was like odd knowledge, you know what I mean? Like yeah, you gotta you gotta choke up here. I'm like, why would I choke up? And then I choke up and I hit like a two run double and he's like, I told you, I'm like, this is odd, Dad. Like you shouldn't like <laughs> just, odd, just odd knowledge, you know what I mean? But yeah, like it was just cool stuff like that. Like I remember him coaching me like in some of those games in baseball. And I never forget, like when I was a kid, like he, the, I mean, the first thing he would do when he got home from work, man, he changed clothes and we'd go outside and he would just throw BP, like just constant, just constant BP, ground balls, BP, ground balls. And this was like after working all day, like it'd be six o'clock at night, man. He'd like change clothes. All right, let's go. Got to hit BP. And he'd come out and throw BP and ground balls. I mean, we would do that until it was time to eat dinner and, but yeah, man, it, it, baseball is baseball has always been a connective point for us. So it's 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 really cool. Yeah, I gotta ask you this real quick before we before we move into previewing the games coming up this week. Yes, sir. Um, so obviously, for those who don't know, you know Ben and I have known each other for years. Like Ben was the officiant yeah. of my wedding. Um, to put in context, how long we've known each other. Yeah. Um, so Ben played high school sports. And like growing up with former Seattle Seahawks running back, National Football League MVP, Sean Alexander. Mm -hmm. Was Sean like a power hitter in baseball? Was he like fast? No, he was fast. Um, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he, he was fast. So uh, so he was the kid. Like, I mean, of course, he had some pop. I mean, he could he could definitely hit one out. Um, but he was he was definitely he was like Ella De Cruz, hit a chopper, run it out. Hit a hit a find a gap, run it out, steal second, steal third, and if you drop a ball, steal home. Like he was that kid. So, yeah, he was definitely a hit. He was more of a hit for average. His brother was a hit for average too. Actually, Duran was a really good hitter. Hmm. So, yeah. But yeah, they 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 but they but he had some pop when he needed it. But yeah, he was more like let's get on base and and steal all these bases. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah. The, so I don't say this because it's from this the same high school, but like Sean Alexander's high school football reel, like his high school highlight tape is like the most ridiculous thing I've maybe have ever seen. It's like John yeah. Wall's basketball highlight reel or Bryce Harper's baseball highlight reel. It's that insane. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's, yeah, it's incredible. Yeah. So let's talk about the week coming up and I'm going to mention something here in a bit as well after this. Uh, so there was a lot of wondering what was going to happen with tomorrow's game. Brandon Williamson is, in fact, going to make his scheduled start. There was wondering if he wasn't. Uh, mm -hmm. they, said they announced that after the game against Austin Gomber, who um, has every number 
in single digits except for one and three in there at four and six with a 7.29 ERA. This mm. is the Rockies we're talking about here. Uh, Tuesday, true. you've got Ben Lively, four and four with a 407, going against Kyle Freeland, four and eight with a 488. Uh, Kyle Freeland's one of those pitchers that I feel like if he didn't pitch in Colorado, could be pretty decent. I actually like yeah. him a lot. Um, potential Reds, Reds candidate uh, for a trade is a guy is, uh, was on Charlie Goldsmith's list as hmm. a potential guy. So I'm actually will be at that game. Um, my wife and I are going and we're taking Iris. So if anyone. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Grace, myself, Grace and Iris will be at the Tuesday game. Uh, so if anyone's going to be there, send me a message to say, hey, I'd love, I'd love to talk with you. Um, Wednesday, you've got. Uh, the unbelievable Andrew Abbott at three and zero with no mm-hmm. ERA yet, uh, going against to be announced. The Rockies have not. Does it matter? You're the Rockies. Like very true. Yeah. Um, though other hitting prospects I love Zach Veen is that dude. So when Zach yeah. Veen's up, like, but you know, it's pitching for Colorado is a very frightening, very frightening <laughs> thing. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. So they got the day off Thursday, and the next weekend is gonna be. Huge. Fascinating. Huge. Fascinating. So the Braves come to town. Uh, Hunter Green on Friday against Bryce Elder. Mm. This is already the third time in Hunter Green's career he's faced the Braves. Big league debut was against the Braves. And then he faced them earlier this year. So that was kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, so that's going to be happening against Bryce Elder, who is really, really good. Yes, he uh, is. Saturday, you got Luke Weaver against Charlie Morton. Charlie Morton, who I think has pitched in the majors since he's like, been here forever. Yeah, I think he was like throwing like I think he was pitching to Ken Griffey Jr. in his in his in like his first two years with the Reds. Yeah, like so it certainly feels like it. Uh, but it's had a really good year. Um, so five and six with a three point six, mm-hmm. and then Sunday, Brandon Williamson should be back in the against Spencer Strider, who is a dude yeah he's yeah he's been a stud yeah he's a dude uh so i'm it's it's gonna be interesting um i'm really excited for this for this week obviously the braves and then right after the braves you go to baltimore for three against the orioles who are like the al version of the reds where it's Mm -hmm. like all their young talent is coming up at once and um so they were fun they were on the they were the peacock game today against the cubs so i watched a little bit of that um, but yeah, this brave series is going to be fun. I'll also be at Saturday's game. Uh, so hopefully Luke Weaver does what he does today. And if you know, just keeps them within blast range. Cause if you keep yeah. the rest of them blast range, uh, you have a chance. Uh, so that's the big thing. Uh, Pat, I don't think Tim Hudson still plays for the, still plays for the Braves. He might still get paid by them. Not for certain there. Um, hmm. but no, he's shockingly not in the big leagues anymore. Nor, you know, but Jason Hayward still in the big leagues. Still there. Somehow. Still somehow. strong. Yeah, somehow. Um, but yeah, so hey guys, look, we've hit just about an hour. Uh, this was a really fun. Uh, again, thank you everyone for sharing all these awesome stories and memories and stuff. Um, I'm really happy to kind of do stuff like this all the time, uh, every so often. Um, mm-hmm. just kind of break up the monotony of just talking about the same stuff. But what a week. What a week. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, if yeah. you're going to be at the ballpark Tuesday or Saturday this week, hit me up. Um, I would absolutely love to see you. Love to talk with you um, and say hello. So, uh, Ben. Absolutely. Thank you so much for coming and hanging out again. Um, oh, man, this is awesome. Yeah. My pleasure. It's a little different here. The but... Reds are good, dude. The Reds are good. Yeah, yeah. they are, man. It's uh, <laughs> it's absolutely a blast to talk about the Reds every week. Uh... I'm going to see if Chad and Nate will let me do more shows a week because it's just the best time to be talking about the big league club. Uh, yeah. So yeah, absolutely love it. Uh, awesome. Thank you all so much. Like I said, you know, if you're watching this on YouTube and you haven't subscribed, take a couple seconds. It's going to help us out so much. Uh, whatever podcast app you're listening to us on, just give us that nice solid five star review. Check out the boys on the riverfront every Friday morning for you all. Uh, to have on your commute to work. Check out the Riverfront Bengals show with Joe Farfsing and Greg Neiman. Uh, really, really good dudes there as well. 
Uh, on behalf of Ben, this is Tim Daniel. Take it easy, everyone. We'll see you soon. Thank you, guys.